Question 2. So this question is about group 70. <clears throat> so we have chlorine, bromine, iodine. And they shows trends in their physicals and chemicals properties. Okay, part A. Describe the trend in the color of group 17 elements down the group. Of course, it's darker down the group. Okay, so we know that chlorine is a green gas. Bromine is a uh, orange liquid. And uh, iodine is a black solid. Okay, B. The group 17 elements can oxidize many metals to form halides. Okay, describe the re relative reactivities of the elements in group 17 as oxidizing agent. Okay, so first you need to know what is oxidizing agent means. So it means it's able to oxidize other species. So it means it's going to get electrons from other species. For example, if a chlorine reacts with sodium, sodium will release one electron to form sodium ion. Okay, so the electrons will gain by the chlorine, later it's from chloride. Okay, and the sodium now is oxidized to sodium ion from zero to negative uh, positive one. So we know that all these group 17 elements, they're able to gain electron from others. At the same time, it's oxidized others. And we need to know the ability of these elements to gain electron or to attract electron. So when down the group, we know that. When down the group, we know that the electron shell increases, more electron shell, size become larger and therefore the attractions to the electron now is weaker means the ability for these elements to group 17 elements to gain electron is weaker because more electron shell more shooting so we know that when down the group is going to be a weaker oxidizing agent because it's uh, attractions to electrons weaker means ability to gain electron is weaker. Part 2. Chlorine reacts with hot tin metal to form this uh, SnCl4. Okay, the tin 4 chloride. And SnCl4 is a colorless liquid at room temperature. So it's already told you liquid at room temperature, so it won't be giant. Most likely, it's telling you it's a simple structure. And it reacts vigorously with water. Uh, if reacts with water means it's undergo hydrolysis, and most likely the bonding inside this compound will be covalent. Covalent compound. So it will undergo hydrolysis uh, with the water. Okay, so from this information, from this sentence, we know that it has a simple structure and the bonding is covalent. So you just explain accordingly. Okay, it has a simple molecular structure because the melting point is low. It has covalent bond because it can be hydrolyzed. It can react with water. Part C, group 17 elements form soluble halides with sodium. Describe what you see when dilute silver nitrate added to sodium bromide. So very easy. So you see the cream precipitate because silver bromide is formed. And followed by ammonia solution. So the precipitate dissolved in the aqueous ammonia. Or you can say that the precipitate is partially dissolved partially dissolved in aqueous ammonia uh, that's one for it that, that one is for the silver bromide okay so for part two sodium chloride reacts with concentrated H2SO4 to form the HCl and NaHSO4 okay like in this equation so this is the equations that involved. Okay, if let's say uh, you want to know the type of reaction 
it's better to convert this one to this equation then you can see clearly so if we just use chloride instead of sodium chloride so after reactions we know that it's from HCl from chloride to HCl it gains one proton and H2SO4 is the one that donates proton so we know that H2SO4 is the acid chloride is a base so means this reaction purely acid base reaction okay that's the first sentence first answer okay and you have to explain uh, explain the difference between the reactions uh, of the concentrated H2SO4 with NaCl and NaI your answer should refer to the role of sulfuric acid okay I already told you just now for the sodium chloride with H2SO4 the role of H2SO4 is the acid so it donates proton so H2SO4 is an acid which donates proton to the chloride okay the reactions between the sodium ion dye and the H2SO4 it has two function H2SO4 now it has two rules the first row is same as just now acid base second it's going to be oxidizing agent so the H2SO4 it will act as the oxidizing agent it will oxidize the iodides to iodine negative 1 to 0 at the same time the sulfate itself will reduce to H2S so means this reaction is going to be a redox reaction so means for this one sodium iodide with H2SO4 so it's the acid and base reaction and a redox reaction because the H2SO4 further reacts and oxidizes the HI to iodine so why the H2SO4 cannot oxidize the sodium chloride because H2SO4 is not strong enough to oxidize HCl very hard to break this HCl bond and more products form between the NaI with H2SO4 so it has iodine sulfur SO2 H2S but for this NaCl with H2SO4 it just form these two uh, that's the difference between them okay part D hydrogen halide use are uh, useful reagent in organic and inorganic reaction describe part one describe and explain the trend in the boiling point of the HCl HBr and HI so we know that when down the group size of this halogen is larger so when size larger means the molecule is larger and of course more electrons now it has greater when the was force so we know that when down the group boiling point will increase because the numbers of electrons increases which means size become larger when the size is larger then the when the was force or you can actually say that id id because it's just about the electrons number so this when the was force increases down the group okay part two describe and explain the trend in thermal stability of this hcl hbr hi uh, it differs from this uh, part one because uh, for part one is asking the forces between molecules let's say now we have hi so it's asking the forces between two molecules okay which is the uh, id id uh, uh, in the part one and this part two is asking the bond breaking means hcl bond okay when it's break uh, so it needs how much energy and same thing happened for hbr hi so we know that when down the group size increase and bonds is longer because the the size of atom this halogen is is uh, more 
Therefore, the bond is weaker and it's easy to break. When it's easy to break means we know that the thermal stability is not good because easy to break, not stable at all when we hit it. Okay, so we know that thermal stability decreases down the group. Okay, and you just explain down the group what happened. Size halogen larger, bond length is longer, bond energy between the H and the halide is lower. All right, so easy to break. Okay, part E. We have this uh, locus reagent, which is the HCl and the uh, zinc chloride. And this one will react with primary, secondary, tertiary, and it will form the halogenyl alkane. And the zinc chloride acts as homogeneous catalyst. Explain what it means by homogeneous. Very easy. The catalyst or the species which is in the same phase, same phase with the reactants. Okay, part two. Pentane 3 O, this one, reacts slowly with HCl to form a secondary halogenyl alkene. Complete the equations for this reaction using structural formula. Okay, this structural formula is already given. You need to substitute this OH with a chlorine, that's all. So you're going to put this pentane 3 O plus HCl form this. C2H5CHCl C2H5 plus water. Do not okay, forget this one, H2O. Right? Because OH here combined with H here from H2O and the chlorine okay, will substitute the OH. Okay, the fastest reaction shown by the locus reagent is with the tertiary alcohol. Draw the structure of tertiary alcohol. Uh, which is the isomer of pentane 3 uh, This one very easy. You just try to <clears throat> do this first. The C with OH, you just put three carbons uh, bonded to that. Then you complete the remaining. So because here we know that it's just one, two, three, four, four carbon, you need to have another carbon. So you just complete with H, you get this structure. Okay, part four. Tertiary uh, alcohol tend to react with locus reagent using the same mechanism as in their reaction with HCl. Okay, suggest so the type of reaction shown by the tertiary alcohol with this uh, locus reagent. Okay, let's say now this tertiary alcohol react with the reagent. This OH will be substituted by chlorine. So we know that the type of reactions must be substitution. That's all for this question. Thank you.